Ben Stein wrote an article for the American Spectator where he argued that state-sanctioned religion may be the only thing that will help poor people. I couldn't make this up if I tried. He doesn't think that if we merge together the state and the church, that it will lead to, I don't know, for example, no more condoms. If the church gets to control the state, what would they do? They would, you know, put their social policy into place. So no more condoms, forget the pill, that's gone. No more abortion, you know. And by the way, all these things would lead to overpopulation and more poverty. But no, he thinks the best way to fight poverty is to have state-sanctioned religion. Listen to him attack the poor. He says, quote, What will make the genuinely poor stop sabotaging themselves? I love the assumption. They're obviously self-sabotaging. There's no such thing as any systemic problems. He says, maybe, just maybe, if we let God back into the public forum, it would help. I have seen spiritual solutions work miracles. That's fantastic, Ben. So you met one guy who found Jesus and his life got better, and you want to make everybody do the same thing. Uh, good point. We'll throw out the Constitution, and we'll implement that. I love how these are the same people that scream about how the, we believe in the Constitution, man, the Constitution, Second Amendment, don't come for our guns, goddammit. Second Amendment, Second Amendment, Constitution, we believe in it. And then the second that a part of the Constitution conflicts with one of their beliefs, shh, don't say anything about the Constitution. Did you mention the Constitution? Shut the fuck up. We're trying to avoid it right now. We're trying to evade it. No mention of the Constitution. But anyway, so he's putting that aside. And by the way, I love the idea that just implement religion. Okay, what religion? Let's put, uh, I, I agree, buddy, let's put in Hinduism tomorrow. Let's implement Hinduism into, into uh, the state. Oh, you don't want Hinduism. That's weird. All right, uh, can we agree on Buddhism? Boom, let's put Buddhism into place. No? Shinto? No. Scientology? No. Mormonism? No. Greek gods? No. Roman gods? No. Oh, so you just mean the one religion that you want to pick, you little punk bitch. We're not supposed to go by people's opinions and put that into law. It's supposed to be a lot more democratic than that, and a lot more objective than that, and a lot more constitutional than that. But he's like, no, I like this, so let's just make this law for everybody. Let's just do that. Is that cool? I don't care what you think. That's what we're going to do. How fucking pretentious is this guy? So I got more of what he says. It gets worse. He says, quote, my humble observation is that most long-term poverty is caused by drug use, drunkenness, having children without a family structure, gambling, poor work habits, disastrously unfortunate appearance, above all, and, and counted in the preceding list, psychological problems, very much including basic laziness, cause people to be unemployed, have poor or no work habits, and enter and stay in poverty. Wow. I've never seen a, a rant based less on the facts. Just pure stereotypes across the board. Oh, you're poor? What's wrong with you? What are you, an alcoholic? What are you, just a lazy fuck? What do you hate yourself? What's going on here? Well, get your shit together. What's the problem? As if it's really that simple. It's all on the individual. There's no such thing as a systemic problem. No such thing as a systemic problem. Look, it, here's my problem. I have many problems with Ben Stein, but here's one of the biggest problems with his argument about the poor. Is he's disregarding the, the plethora of the evidence. So, for example, we live in a country where if you work a full-time job, you don't make enough money to survive. And you then have to run to food stamps, you have to run to Medicaid, and you have to actually use the government, even though you're a productive citizen and you're working full-time. So you're to tell me, Ben Stein, that somebody who works full-time and only makes... $14,000 a year that that person has themselves to blame for it. Really? Or how about the person who works three part-time jobs? Like we discussed a woman earlier who died because she didn't have health care, but she worked three part-time jobs and was trying to get by to take care of her kids. She made $9,000 a year. She is clearly poor. But your idea is, well, she, obviously she's got to be either a drug user, she's got to be drunk, Okay, she have to be no family structure, she's a gambler, poor work habits, unfortunate appearance, I mean, obviously, or she's just lazy, that's what it is. Or you just made all of that up. Look, am I saying that there's no such thing as a poor, lazy person? Of course not. But I say it, when you're determining what percentage of poor people are lazy or what percentage of people that use the government safety net are lazy, you actually go by the data. Now, what does the data say on this issue? Well, how do you prove... You know, people are not of the best character, okay? 
uh, if they're uh, poor people or if they're using the government safety net. It's easy. You find out what the government fraud rate is in the different programs. So that's the number of people cheating the system in a given program. So take food stamps, for example. This is one that the Republicans love to demonize. So what's the fraud rate in food stamps? I mean, obviously, they say, look, they're fucking taking food from the government. They're poor. Obviously, they're drunk. They're lazy. They're just, they're not good people. That's why they're relying on the government, right? So there must be riddled with fraud, the system. All these guys cheating the system, right? 1%. A USDA study found that 1% of the people on food stamps uh, are using it unjustly. So look, man, what we're talking about when we talk about poor people, by and large, they're very similar to middle class people and very similar to rich people, I might add. You know, people are people. All right. Of course, there's a small percentage, anywhere from 1% to 5% at most in any group that might be lazy or might be, you know, alcoholics or whatever. But they're people. Everybody's just basically trying to do the same thing with a little bit of variation on, on a spectrum here. But we're all trying to get by and be happy and find meaning in life and love somebody or find hobbies that we love. Or We're all trying to do that. Whether you're poor and you make $12,000 a year, whether you make $115,000 a year or $2 million a year, by and large, that's what we try to do. So when you make these blanket statements of like, well, obviously, if you're poor, you're a drunk or you have terrible work habits or you gamble... You're just making it up, man. You're just making it up, and it's really gross, it's really disgusting, and it shows that you value your visceral gut opinion and stereotypes over any look at the data.